again today guys um we're back again we're going to talk about another african kingdom so you can never say that you don't know about african kingdoms and queens and kings because we're covering them right here so let's get into it right away today hope you're having a good day good week it's the end of the week so you should be happy right and i hope everything in your life is going good but today we're going to learn about another african kingdom so today we'll be talking about the takru kingdom and the takru kingdom was located in the valley of the senegal river and was a vassal state of the empire of ghana and i actually made a video about the empire of ghana so if you haven't watched that watch that first and then this might make more sense to you and the kingdom existed from the 800s to the uh 1280s and when the ghana empire fell the kingdom expanded its authority in the area and now the kingdom's beliefs were african traditional religions first and then islam after that in which the kingdom was one of the first uh to convert to islam in west africa and in that area and the kingdom became known as an islamic state thereafter now the state housed different ethnic groups, one being the Fulani who migrated uh, east to the Senegal Valley. And the kingdom was also a uh, big trading center where salt, gold, and grains from the Sahara, which is the area between the um, Northern Sahara Desert and the more vegetational lush Southern area of West Africa, um, where they all traded at. Now, during the time the kingdom was controlled by the Ghana Empire, the kingdom would still clash with, with its rulers. And during these clashes, the kingdom usually lost the battles uh, to its empire, or to the Ghana Empire, when the Ghana Empire controlled this vassal state or this kingdom we're talking about. But despite these clashes, the kingdom still prospered throughout its existence. And the kingdom, after the empire uh, of Ghana's power faded, after the empire of Ghana fell and the power faded, um, this kingdom would side with Tereg and Berber tribes or ethnic groups. And with this alliance, this would mean uh, that some of the kingdom's troops reached all the way to southern Europe and Spain due to uh, the Berbers and uh, Tereg having troops in that area and conquering uh, different parts of uh, northern Africa and southern Europe. And with this unity between uh, these ethnic groups, different ethnic groups, um, especially the Tereg and, and Berber, the kings of the kingdom would eventually adopt Islam, also through trade, around 1030 during the reign of King War Jaba. The adoption of Islam uh, benefited the state economically and also created political ties that would help uh, them in coming conflicts with other kingdoms and empires. And the kingdom would soon start to decline from within soon after. The Susu would take a big portion of the kingdom as well as the Wolof, uh, who created the Wolof state that emerged in the south uh, part of the kingdom or south southern area of the kingdom. Now, meanwhile, the Mandinka tribes were uniting and soon formed the Mali Empire in 1235, with the kingdom being in steep decline, the state was finally conquered soon after by the Mali Empire. And that is the story of the vassal state or kingdom. And that is the story of the kingdom of Takru. Every kingdom we have to understand was not for a very long time. Every kingdom did not last for a long time. Some kingdoms popped out of other kingdoms or empires that were bigger than just kingdoms. They were, you know, numerous amounts of kingdoms. And this kingdom or vassal state when it was part of the empire of Ghana um, is one of these examples and nonetheless it was still a kingdom but it was really really quick when it comes to the history of kingdoms and is also attached and has history with the empire of Ghana and the empire of Mali. So today we learned about another kingdom. Um, once again, as I always say, share, like, subscribe, share this with as many people of African descent and anybody else that would love to tune in and learn more so about African culture and around the whole world, not just in Africa, in America and Brazil. And um, definitely, I know a lot of people have been asking me a lot of things. Please, please, let me, you know, say one thing. I'm going to go everywhere around the world. I just have a certain way, I, I, you know, certain areas that I go to and I and I, um, I talk about those areas and I stay in those areas and I move to another area. But believe me, Haiti is still coming up. The Maroons, I can never forget about them. African-American history, uh, Afro-Panamanian history is coming soon. Also, uh, more Afro-Brazilian history um, and a whole bunch of other different kind of this, histories of African descent. So as always, um, like I said, share, like, subscribe, send it to your friends and everybody likes learning, right? So until next time, I'm out. Peace.
What's up, what's up? Hey! Shalom! What up? Hi! Every day! 